Well, it is such a privilege to join you at Equip today, and um, I'm really excited to be part of part, part of your day, um, even in just this small part, because um, I've heard great news of all the work that's gone on through Equip, um, sold out that whole that whole thing that's been going on in Wales for a number of years, and I've wanted to come and see what's happening. Um, and I've never quite made it. But here by the wonders of modern technology, I can join you. So there are very few advantages to a global pandemic, but one of them is that um, we can do some stuff online. And so I get to be a small part of this day. Um, So thank you for having me. And um, Meryl, who I've met a number of times over the years, um, I know Andy and Charlotte as well. Um, Meryl asked me to just to speak for a few moments on how can we live an intentional and um, distinctive life in such a challenging time, in such a challenging season? What's it look like for us to live an intentional and distinctive life? Um, and so I want to just deal with those two things um, immediately, intentional and distinctive, and just look at those two um, words and actually ask the question, how, well, how do we live that? What does that look like? And I hope that these few ideas will help you in the right direction. The first thing then is intentional. How do we live an intentional life in a time when it's been so disrupted and so difficult. And I know for all of us, um, in different ways, it's been a really challenging 2020, not anything we would have expected. Um, and we've had to adjust time and time again. And it's been difficult sometimes to be intentional, uh, partly because we feel buffeted around by the latest news. We feel pushed by the latest um, update around coronavirus that is, you know, dominated all our political, our economic, uh, all our social conversation. It's, it's just been totally there. And it's almost like, This thing has sought to control us. And so it's very difficult to then think, what does it look like for me to be intentional? Well, first thing I want to say is this, that um, so so often when things happen that are surprising or difficult, we can see them as interruptions. But I want to invite you to see them as an invitation. So is it an interruption or is it an invitation? And the invitation is simply this. God is at work in the world. He's in the midst of all that's going on. And uh, there's often, even in the most complex and difficult situations, an invitation from him, if we can hear that invitation and not be so distracted distracted by the interruption. So what's the invitation? And you can apply that in any situation, not just coronavirus, but it could be any situation in your future where it feels difficult or there's a challenging time, maybe even a season of suffering. To ask yourself the question, what's the invitation here from God? Um, You know that illustrated from the Bible, potentially. And you've been looking at Daniel this week. And as you explore Daniel's story, there's a recognition that things are not all as Daniel would have wanted them. And there are moments of great pressure and strain and stress uh, upon all of the people of God in that season of biblical history. And yet Daniel responds to invitations. He goes on his knees before God. He, He decides to still stand for God when he's told he's not allowed to, to worship him, even though that might end up in having a confrontation with some lions, which nobody would choose. But Daniel responds to an invitation. And as a result, the glory of God is on display for all to see. So there's an invitation here somewhere for you, however difficult you found this um, this year and particularly a global pandemic. I mean, who could have predicted it? But where are the invitations? What could God be doing in and through you and spot those and respond to them? Um, I was fascinated. I was reading this in the summer. The Rise of Christianity, um, one of my summer reading books. um, And uh, I was recommended it by the person I work for here in London. And what's interesting is that one of the the chapters in this book um, says that part of the reason that the Christianity rose in those early centuries and gathered such momentum, one of the reasons was that there were a number of pandemics that flooded the Roman world. And the way in which the Christians responded to those pandemics was so different to um, other people that that was partly attributed to the rise of Christianity because people spotted it and saw, wow, these people are different. So, for example, they would go with confidence into that pandemic with a sense of peace because they knew that God was with them, even though the world was you know, in a pandemic. There would be an, a, a sense of peace, a sense of confidence in God. And as a result of that, the Christians chose to serve those around them, particularly those who are sick and who are dying from the pandemic. And people observed this and a number of Christians actually even died as a result of serving others. But such was their confidence in their invitation to heaven and their invitation to be a witness for Christ, even in this world, that they went for it. And people looked at them and thought there's something different here. And it gave rise to Christianity. You might want to have a look at that book sometime. Isn't that interesting? So it's the way in which the Christians were intentional in serving others in a difficult time that then began to show the glory of God to everyone around them. Uh, moving on quickly, the second thing. So there's an intentional thing and uh, around that. And actually, you know, wh- how could you serve and how do you ask that question? Where's the invitation uh, and not the interruption? 
But then that leads us into being distinctive. How do we become distinctive in a time that's real, full of crisis and a real struggle? How do Christians be that? Well, one clue is what I just said from, from here, from, from serving others and from loving others in a time of what has been panic for others, uh, for, for many people. But we become distinctive by really taking control of the situation, not, not by letting the, 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 the situation buffet us, pushed around by the wind and the waves of this storm, but actually saying, well, actually, what, what things can I take control of? What things can I take hold of? And you can always take hold of things, even in an uncontrollable situation. Some things you will never have control over the outcome, but some things you can. How you behave, how you're perceived and how you lean into God. So to become distinctive in this time, we need to lean into him. We need to be praying and seeking him, reading the scriptures and then demonstrating that to everyone around. Uh, we often say in some of the leadership coaching that I do that there are four distinctives of a Christian leader. And um, I'm not going to give you all those for right now. But the first one is this. Uh, it's identity. So to be a dis distinctively Christian influencer or leader, whatever you put yourself in that category or not, is to know that your identity is deeply rooted in Christ. Now, again, that's another whole seminar. But if you want to be distinctive, you need to know that you're not controlled and buffeted by other things, but you're controlled by Jesus. Identity is in part to do with control, who I give control to. Am I going to listen to the latest news broadcast and be influenced by that? Or am I going to listen to the latest scripture and what Jesus may be saying to me and respond to that? Those are important questions to, to begin to work out. Oh, gosh, is my identity in other things, my work, the world, the media, the culture? Or is my identity deeply rooted in Christ and I'm taking my cues from him? Ask yourself those questions and then maybe you'll become a more intentional a more distinctive person as you seek to work your way through these complex days. Um, I'll be praying for you as you're gathering and asking that God would show you the way and do something extraordinary amongst you as you gather.